Coach Thomas Wilcher. Coach Wilcher, like Coach Thorne, are the two inductees this year with the fewest years coaching. Only 28. The babies of the class. <laughs> Coach Wilcher began coaching the football at Detroit Central for one year and then went to Cass Technical. Six years in his, as an assistant and in 1997 became their head coach. Has won 18 league division championships and six Detroit Public School League championships. And currently has a nine year home field winning streak. Has not lost at home since 2009. Has 34 consecutive conference wins from 2011 to 2017. Has coached five undefeated regular seasons and one undefeated season in 2016. Has a one loss record of 93 and 14, an 86.9 winning percentage from 2010 to 2017. 18 year state playoff qualifier with nine district championships and eight regional championships. Division I state runner-up in 2015, and a three-time Division I state champion, 11, 12, and 16. Has been awarded the Detroit Lions Coach of the Week and Coach of the Year, a two-time Michigan Chronicle and a three-time Detroit Free Press and News Coach of the Year. He has coached in the U.S. Army All-American Bowl and the Under Armour All-American Game. In 2016, he was a finalist for the U.S. Army All-American Bowl National Coach of the Year. And in 2017, was named the Michigan High School Athletic Association Coach of the Year. He was a Michigan High School Football Coaches Association East-West All-Star Game East Coach in 2002. This is a five-time MHS FCA Regional Coach of the Year and a three-time MHS FCA Division I Coach of the Year, 11, 12, and 16. He will be coaching at Cass Tech in the fall. Coach Wolcher's biggest thrill in coaching. In 2011, fifth, in 2011, 15 players had to be suspended with our final regular season game that coming Friday. We were five and three and had to win to make the playoffs. And I had to set and I had to set the example. We won the game without several starters on a punt return by Jordan Lewis. Score six zero. We went on to win our first state title. Coach Wilcher's most humorous incident in coaching. Remember, it's two thousand eleven. When I got to practice one day during the week of the state championship game, several reporters showed up to talk to the players, but only 14 showed up. Because 15 were suspended. <laughs> what coaching has meant to Coach Wilch? Coaching allows me to build faith in myself, enabling me to inspire young men and women to succeed, and provides me with an opportunity to motivate those young men and women so they can be productive contributors to society. Ladies and gentlemen, the newest member of the Hall of Fame, goes Thomas Wilcher. Well, I'm glad I'm the first one here. All right. One thing I want to do is be swift and be quick because I know I am the last one. But the most important thing about today is that I came to this banquet before, back in 1995, when they, entered, when they had inducted my coach, Coach Woody Thomas, into the Michigan High School Football Coaches Hall of Fame. I never knew that I would be here because I just thought I was coming to a banquet. I never knew where I would be at. And so that led me to believe one thing I read in Ecclesiastes, in chapter 9, verse 11 and 12. I have seen something else under the sun. The race is not to the swift, or the battle is to the strong. Nor does food come to the wise, or wealth to the brilliant, or favor to the learned. But time and chance happen to them all. Moreover, no one knows when their hour will come. That lets me to believe and want to thank the Michigan High School Football Association for inducting me into their Hall of Fame. I'd like to thank Coach Drake and Coach Andre Harlan because 
a couple years ago, Andre Holland kept asking me to fill out the paperwork. I'll take it on my desk and said, I did it. He said, no, you didn't. <laughs> I said, okay, I'm trying to do it. Come back a few years later, Coach Drake come back and said, hey, do the paperwork. I said, yeah, I did it. Go on top of my desk. He said, no, you didn't. I said, okay, you follow me out. Then he called me up in the other I said, I, I didn't put the paperwork out. Drake said, I fooled you. I did it myself. <laughs> <laughs> so I like to thank him. I like to also thank all my coaches. I like to thank Dave Lett, my office coordinator. I like to also thank Cash Caldwell, one of my former students, one of my former players. I also like to thank William Sassy, one guy who stood there, came there every single day and was ready to go. I also like to thank Dennis Parker, a man who I looked across the field and never knew he'd be standing beside me, not taking L's, but showing me how to give people L's once again. I like to thank Nick Martin, one, who was, one guy who has a lot of knowledge about football on the defensive line. I like to thank Sean Williams, Marvin Rushing, another student of mine, who was a player that I would take home every day and tell him, hey, you will be great. You will do a lot of good things. And now he is a district manager for Comerica Bank, runs the whole east side of Detroit. Kenneth Seabury, a lawyer, one of my other students, one of the other players. We also have Nick Moran, Paul Cochran, and Jason Coleman. For all my coaches, please stand. <laughs> to my friends who also came here to support me. Jermaine Crowell, he's absent today, but he was here in spirit. Mr. Robin Shannon is my athletic director, who taught me how to say, don't worry about money, think about your health, think about what you can do as a person, because your job does not make you. You have to make the job. And he was one of the reasons why I stayed at Cass Tech, as long as I did. My principal, Lisa Phillips, she always encouraged me to do my best. She always encouraged me to always strive to be who I, who I was supposed to be. And I want to thank her very much. And to the coaches from Detroit, Eric Smith, Coach Godfrey, Jimmy Macon, also Coach uh, Drake and Coach Harlan, and also Coach Ono, and thank you all, everyone, for coming here to support me today. And also, I want to thank Richard Fagan for escorting me today, and her support, standing all those games in the rain. And also, I'd like to thank Detroit Public Schools for allowing me to keep my job. Staying here every single day, because I interviewed my job six times. Six times I interviewed for my job. But I was never fired, I just had to keep interviewing over and over again to prove I was worthy of the job. Also, I thank Mr. Jimmy Suttles, a friend I met a few years ago. He's the UAW Vice President, Mr. Jimmy Suttles. He's a mentoring guy, supporting my vision. I had Detroit Public Schools, <laughs> athletics and football. And also, he helped support me this year I helped raise the funds for the Michigan High School Football Coach Association All-Star Game, which I wanted to help Coach Drake out this year. I want to thank Mr. Jimmy Sellers for everything he did for me and my vision and everything I'd like to succeed in. Thank you, Mr. Sellers. <laughs> and if those people could please stand, I'd like for you to be recognized. Mr. Sellers, Fagan. My coach. My family, Mr. and Mrs. Evan Wilcher. My brother was always there in the backbone, always just giving me all those beat downs growing up. <laughs> but it taught me how to taught me how to fight. Taught me how to instill and tell a few lies. Also, my mother, who also gave me a lot of strong support, always there, all the time. And also my son, my daughter, who was present, who's not present today, my son Kashan Wilcher, my daughter, Kirsten Wilcher. They are not present here today. They're both down in Miami, Florida, living it up. So. <laughs> but my oldest daughter was always my ride and die. She goes to all my banquets. She's always supporting me. My daughter, Kyla Wilchers, who's always here today. Could y'all please stand? My mother can raise her hand, too. <laughs> well, one thing I must say is this right here is that one thing happens at a certain time for everybody. But for me, coaching was not my calling. I did not want to coach. I refused to coach. I got I was asked several times to coach. I started out really at Ann Arbor Huron. 
But they kept asking me to coach, coach, coach. I said, no, I don't do it. They finally got me over here to coach over here. I'm here on, I was successful. Then my coach, Woody Thomas, heard about me coaching. And he said, well, you coach up there, you got to come down here and coach. I said, I said, no, I can't do it. I said, I did it one time, I won't do it again. He said, no, you got to do it because you got to do it for us. I said, somebody helped you. I said, okay, you're right. I did it. I was very successful again. And he kept begging me to coach. I said, no, I can't coach. So if I have to coach, I have to be a teacher. I said, if I do it, I have to do it right. So I went back to school, become a teacher. And once I came back to school to become a teacher, I began to coach. I began to instill into all the young men that was instilled into me how to become a man, how to become a person, how to learn how to fight. And I wanted someone to feel the same thing I feel growing up. Me, I never experienced how to lose. I want to teach my young men how to win. And once you teach someone how to win, you're teaching someone how to be successful in life. And that's what I wanted to do, teach someone how to be successful. But in my coaching, when I really knew I was a coach was when I was a state championship game. All the coaches kept asking me, he said, coach, first state championship. He said, coach, what are we going to do? I said, no one's here at practice. I said, what are we going to do? I said, I don't know. I said, ask the other coaches what we're going to do. I don't know. We're going back in here and sit down. And they said, well, ain't nobody here to practice. I said, well, everybody go home. I said, so we went home. The coach said, coach, you can't do that. I said, I said, y'all coaches too. Can't y'all figure something out? He said, OK. So I went back into the back room, watched film. Came back the next day. No one was here. He said, coach, what you going to do? I said, gosh. I said, I don't know what I'm going to do. I said, let's meet, get together. They all got together, we all met, and I walked out the door. They said, did y'all come up with something? They said, uh, we wait on you. I said, okay. I came back in, I said, well, I'll figure it out later. Came back the next day, I said, coach, what are we going to do? Nobody's here, can't practice. I said, wherever's here, we're going to practice what we got. We're going to beat this team, we're going to win our first state title. They said, what, are we gonna, what plays are we going to run? I said, I don't know. Go out there and practice something. <laughs> I'll put it back in and watch film. I said, I'll figure it out later. So that Thursday, I figured it out. I said something the office coordinator always wanted to hear, and that was throw the ball. <laughs> he said, for real? I said, yes, throw the ball. I said, you can throw the ball 40 yards. That's, that's what he did. He threw the ball all day in our first state championship game. Our quarterback broke records and everything as a freshman. But the most important thing was, at that point in time, I really did understand I had to be a coach. I really didn't understand that people look at me for more than just who I am as a person. They look at me as a leader. They look at me as a person they want to follow. They look at me as a person who must lead, who must instruct, and who must direct them for guidance. And also, my teammates, my players, my coaches, my family, all of those things in me. And that's what I instill every single day, direction. The most important thing I also learned was that when my mother had an operation, she had to come live with me. I was coaching, we were winning, we was trying to get to the state playoffs again, we was trying to win the state title. But everything had to become a halt. I had to, my mother had to move in, I went out my room. She took over my room. She stayed there every night. I said, God, she had that big old bed, I had a little twin bed I'd sleep in. <laughs> but, hey, that's your mom. You gotta do it. And I did. Every morning, get up, cook her breakfast. Get up about 5 o'clock in the morning, cook her breakfast. Then I set her lunch out so she can get that because she couldn't move around too good. Go pick my niece up, bring her back to the house, be at work by 8 o'clock in the morning, go to practice, come back home, cook her dinner, sit there, listen to her talk, and take her medicine, help her wash, help her bathe, take her, give her a shower, give her a bath, whatever I had to do for her. I would do that every day. What, what I was learning was how to be patient. I was learning how to be a father. I was learning how to love. And that's what I did. I learned how to be a father to my kids. I learned how to talk to them a little bit better. I learned how to listen to my daughter, listen to my son. I learned how to be a mentor. Because one, one of my football players named Kev, Kevon, we called him Gucci Man. He ran into his car, his brand new car into a tree and died. And the mother was crying. She didn't know what she was going to do. He was in the morgue. She, she couldn't bear him anything. I said, I'm a coach. I don't understand how to bury a child. I have not had to bury anyone yet. But the mother looked at me as a father. She looked at me as a mentor. She looked at me as guidance. I had to find out how to bury her child. I had to find out 
how to get the child buried, how to pay for a funeral on everything. I did whatever she wanted. I got it done. But that's what my mother taught me, patience, how to give, how to love someone. And when you're teaching yourself how to love, you extend it to everybody that you touch. And through loving, my mother taught me, she taught me a little bit more how to love and give a little bit more. And so now, when I coach, I give myself. I don't hold nothing back. Because if you hold something back, you're cheating someone. So you don't want to cheat anyone in life. And so therefore, as I go through life every single day now, I go through those lessons of every day, being patient, being a mentor, and teaching someone how to love a little bit more, how to listen a little bit harder. And so through that, I want to say, and end with this right here. When I read Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verse 18 through 20, this is what I have observed to be good. That is appropriate for a person to eat, to drink, and to find satisfaction in their toilsome labor under the sun. During a few days of life that God has given us, for this is our lot. Moreover, when God gives someone wealth and possessions and the ability to enjoy them, we must accept their lot and be happy in their toil, because this is a gift of God. So we reflect on the days of our life because God keeps them occupied with gladness in our hearts. I will always be grateful and humble for the path I was given. And thank you very much.